if your car has no engine how far can you go the common denominator of the gospel message is holiness what is the gospel message saying whichever church you belong to without holiness no man shall see the lord the gospel message says the holy god who lives in holy heaven sent his holy son jesus christ to the world to redeem men from sin and death and make them holy so that he may take them to his holy heaven to live with the holy god forever holiness is what makes you a true christian the central message of the gospel therefore is holiness now let's count how many times holiness holy comes from this sentence i read the summary of the gospel messages the holy god who lives in holy heaven and holy heaven sent his holy son jesus christ to the world to redeem men from sin and death and make them holy so that he may take them to his holy heaven to live with the holy god forever how many holiness is in this sentence huh? six and then the last one is holiness is what makes you a true christian is that okay the central message of the gospel is holiness how many holiness holy eight thank you then the question is what is holiness what is holiness this is how holiness starts one it starts with repentance men are born in sin men women children human being is born or are born in sin rebellion what is sin sin is evil done by you wickedness you do against fellow human beings that sin or wickedness you do against yourself sin is disobedience to god what god tells you to do you refuse to do it that is sin what god says you should not do you do it you disobey him you go ahead to do it that is sin so you repent of your sin you come to god and say i am sorry i disobey you what you say i should not do i am doing what you say i should do i'm not doing it 
So I go against your word. I do wickedness to myself. I do wickedness to my neighbor. So I am a sinner. But God, I don't want this life again. I want to stop this life. Yes, all have sinned. But that should not be a comfort to you. That should not be a comfort to you. That this person has sinned, that person has sinned, that one has sinned. It's not your comfort. You should stop your own. Imagine, what is the joy to you that there is a motor accident? You broke your leg. And you are told that all everybody in this car broke leg. Is that a comfort, a comforting message? Huh? What is it to you that your there was motor accident, your your relation, close relation died, and they say all that were in that accident, motor vehicle died. Is that a comforting message? You don't know them. All you know is your brother who died. Who has something to do for your life? Who has something to do for your family? It is his concern. Oh, my brother died. So your life should be your concern. Forget the fact that that person is a sinner. That one is a sinner. That one is a sinner. Don't think that. It is you. Mind yourself. So, repent of your sins. So, that means you don't need to wait for others to repent of their sins. It's not a communal decision. This, this, this. Let us all go and repent. No, you. You. Go and repent. You repent of your sins. That's to say you are sorry for it. You make up your mind you will not do it again. Then, how will the one you have done already be forgiven? How will you have the power now to stop as you don't want to do it again? How will you have the power to stop doing it? That is where Jesus comes in. Before you take the decision now, that you will not commit sin again. You have committed many. You have committed many. So, what judgment is already waiting for you because you have already disobeyed in many ways. That is why you need Jesus. What do you need Jesus for? You need to accept the judgment God put on Jesus on the cross of Calvary to be, to be for your sake. So that Jesus can count you among those he has suffered their judgment. God, you know, it's just like, God, you know, I gave my life. You punished me on the cross for sinners. I will tell you the sinners you punish me on. Since that person there has come up and said he is sorry for his own sin, count him among the people I suffered for, which means I have been judged for all the sins he has committed. That's why you need Jesus. It's just like Jesus came into this place and gave a sum of money for people he will point to that should eat in the restaurant free because that sum of money has paid for them you get it so he saw you crying that you don't have your money has finished you don't know anyone to help you. You are looking for a helper. Oh, you are looking for a helper? I am looking for somebody I will help too. 
I've already paid money in, this, in, in that organization to serve food free for people I want to help. Since you are looking for a helper and I am interested to help you, I will give your name to be among the people I have paid for free eating. You get it now? That's why you need Jesus. He will point your name among the people he suffered on the cross for. The judgment of their sins were upon him on the cross. So that is why you need Jesus. For your past sin. Once God, Jesus introduces you to the Father. For the sin he suffered on the cross, the Father will tear all the bills. All the, your past bills will be torn away. You, he will not remember them again because they have been paid for. Is that okay? But you need Jesus for the second time. How will you now live henceforth without committing sin? Since sin is stronger than you. Many of these times you struggled to stop it, you were not able. You struggled to stop it, you were not able. You did everything, you were not able. How then, although you don't want to do it again, how will you stop it? How will you overcome the pull in you? Go for alcohol now. Go for alcohol now. Go for the harlot now. Go for a prostitute now. It's a pull. It's a strong pull in your life. Hate this man. Don't talk with him. Don't talk with this woman. Hate her. It is inside. How do you stop it? You need Jesus again. That's the second area you need Jesus. What will he do? He will give you the power to sin no more. As many as received him, to them gave he to become what is that power? How do you become sons of God? So that you should not sin again. When the, when the woman caught in adultery stood before Jesus, what did he say? Go and do what? That is a power. Put into that woman. It is a communication of power. Coming from Jesus. As for these other people that were accusing her, he said, any one of you that have no sin, because none of you have given your life to me, any one of you that have no sin, that has no sin, let him be the first to cast on this woman, because you're all sinners. None of you has come to me to, give, to receive power not to sin again. But as for this woman, since you have come with all humility, and I know it is the power of sin in you. I'm going to give you a higher power. Not to sin again. Go. That word go has all the power to keep you from sinning. Just as the word come has all the power to make you walk on the water. The word go has all the power to break every sin in your life. If you go, as he said, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. That has all the power to heal all sickness, to heal the sickness in your body. That's the word. That's why you need Jesus for power. I want you to know this thing very well. Because you are thinking Satan has power. Did water has power to sink everybody? No. When Jesus said to Peter, Come, all the power of water to sing ceases, ceased. Because the Creator has spoken it. Who will not hear him? Peter jumped into the water and started walking. Because the Creator has invited me. 
Nobody can block me. Glory to God. Join her and clap unto God. She has understood something. Amen. But just busy sitting down here. Hey, my mother will not allow me to go. My mother, in fact, you know, my mother has initiated me into witchcraft. If I am to go now, she will never take it. My father will never. Hey, my father is a serious Muslim. He will never allow me to go. Oh, my sister is the one paying my school fees. He will, she will never allow me to go. My brother, it will not work. My brother is the breadwinner of our family. Let him never hear that I did anything like that. He will cease taking care of. I say the power of the creator has been released. Go! The, all the world will bow. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan will bow and say go. Go. The creator has called you. You see? So that word go. Make that woman free from sin if any man is born of god he does not commit sin and the bible says the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death in that what the law could not do through the flesh God sending his son for, for the sinful flesh condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteousness of God might be practiced by whoever believes in Jesus who will not walk in the flesh but in the spirit there's a power your body carries your flesh carries that must put you in sin but jesus has broken that power destroyed that power if you come to him sin will disappear in your life the test will vanish but then you need jesus again the third time you need jesus again the third time how do you maintain this life of salvation righteousness until you leave this world back to jesus he said i am the alpha i am the omega i am the author of your faith i am the ending of your faith the one that began i am also able to keep you to the end every day get from me Keep on believing in me. Keep on trusting in me. And power of righteousness shall be released for you every day to sustain you. As long as you are with God. You, as long as you hold to God. Because the Bible says, to him that believe, I mean, to him that received him, he gave him power to become the son of God. Even to him that believe in, on his name. Keep on believing every day. The power will be coming to you. It's a daily power as you keep on exercising your faith every day. That's why it is said, the just shall live by faith. Now, if this is so, why are you not yet born again? Why are you not in Christ? If this is so, why have you not come to Jesus? Why are you bringing somebody? It's because of this person. It's because of this one. It's because of this man. It's because of this one woman. It's because of my father. It's because of my mother. It's because of my brother. It's because of my sister. It's a lie. You are not interested in Jesus. Two, you have submitted to the fear of Satan. 
three, you don't want to suffer anything. You're afraid somebody is higher than Jesus that will kill you. That's your problem. That's why up to now, you have not given your life to Christ. So, you're dying to go to hell. Nobody's responsible. Did you try and God didn't su sustain you? Did you dare to come out to follow Jesus and he didn't sustain you? He didn't give you power? You love, you love darkness. You love sin. You love evil power more than God. That's why you are there. Otherwise, all that is required to make you righteous is available. God says, please, judge between me and my vineyard. I planted my vineyard in a fruitful place. I gathered out the stones. I built a fence around it against animals. I built a tower to see enemies from a far distance and uh, raise alarm against it and so on. But what happened that now my vineyard has grown and produced fruit. I'm expecting sweet grapes. Why am I seeing sour grapes? I expect beautiful grapes. Why am I seeing wild grapes? With all the preaching the Lord has given you, your life is still like that? That's the question. Bringing you to this place. He allowed you. Don't think you came here by yourself. Don't even think that the evil plan of your group brought you here no god has right to stop it he allowed you to come because you will hear the true world and get born again and leave that group that's why you came not because there's wisdom in witchcraft to say post you to the headquarters he has right to stop it he who sees from a distance cannot stop you He would have stopped you but he must give you chance sufficiently before he destroys you so that you will not be saying god is wicked no where you are might not give you the true world come to where my true world is although you're coming with a different mind god has a better purpose joseph told his brethren you thought to do me evil but god turned it into good the evil you thought is turned into good to bring salvation to your life and to the to the world so that is it but then the the, the message also says that that school will never pass its ex, its gce examination because or rather to say the students of that school will never pass gce examinations because they are off syllables what they are teaching there is not according to that which is recommended for examination to teach students for examination they're teaching another thing. Yes. Understand this truth before you die. Otherwise, you will die and be cursing some people in hell. Understand this truth. Because so being members of some churches will keep you from heaven. They are not teaching Jesus. They are not exalting Jesus. They are not preaching against sin. They are not telling you how to be holy. They are not telling you how to serve God. That is not their business. So how will you pass a heavenly exam? How? Will you pass heavenly exam? 
you go and dance 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 what has dancing to do with heaven what has dancing to do with removing sin from your life where with all in which way shall a young man cleanse his life from sin is it by dancing no by listening to your word you go to a church where preaching is 10 minutes 15 minutes and even the 10 15 minutes they tell some stories and make sure you should laugh and sing inside how then do you think you will make it to heaven all time is dancing all time is dancing you take your child to a school where the roofs are leaking so anytime it's raining they don't go to school they wait for rain to stop before they can go to school and you expect your child to pass her exam it's not possible you are in a church where they don't know these things the pastor is married to two wives or the pastor is committing adultery very clearly as you know many things are going on their contrary they are even mentioning that there is no occultism there how will you go to heaven it's not going to work you should know it that it will not work. Yes. And it, it goes on to say, confessing Jesus is the first step in the Christian race, but it is not the end of the race. Salvation is not a one-off affair. Initial salvation you receive when you give your life to Jesus Christ. It's not the same thing as the final salvation you receive when you die in Christ. Back to our steps. I have told you faith in Jesus now gives you salvation. What is salvation? Salvation means your sins have been forgiven. Because of Jesus. Salvation means you have in you the power not to sin again from Jesus salvation means you have also a, a control power control or controlling power to keep you henceforth not sinning that's salvation your sins have been forgiven you have received power not to do another one and you have, you have the power by the continual presence of the Lord for I am with you all the way to carry you in righteousness through this life that's salvation now after salvation there is what we call sanctification although the full salvation includes sanctification but let's bring it out to stress it as required for every born again man sanctification is like rinsing your cloth rinsing it you wash it you carry it to another water to rinse off rinse it off so the new dead should be there so when you are born again born again good you will notice as you continue in the Christian life some dirty feelings in your life. Some powerful anger still coming up. Some envy. Some sinful tendencies still coming up. Some kind of pride. But you are a Christian. They don't throw you down as they threw you down before you are struggling but they, they, you will see them you see the smoke coming out it's a defilement to you from time to time this thing happened you don't know how you are you, why did i have to get angry at this matter why did i have to speak like this why did i have there's something required it is called sanctification everybody call it 
Say it again. <laughs> you bought a new car. When the car arrived in your house, you noticed something. What did you notice? Dust. But is it a new car? Did you notice dust there? Because of the rod? Does the dust allow you to see the beauty of the car? If you want to see the beauty of the car, what will you do? Wash! Second cleansing. Wash! Sanctification. God washed me from off from the dust that hinder, hinders my beauty. Wash me. Let me be free and show forth your holiness. That's sanctification. You're born again. It's a new car. If anybody is born again, is, if anyone is in Christ, he's who? A new creature. But something is hindering your newness to, to manifest freely for people. It's anger. It's some loss. It's some pride. It's some this. That. Why? I'm a child of God. But why? Some dust is hindering that car to show forth its newness. You need sanctification. Husbands love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might cleanse and sanctify it with the washing of water by the word as you use water to wash the dust off Jesus will still use the power of the world to wash your heart off from those dirty things that are hindering brilliance brilliance brilliant performance in righteousness in your life that's why you need ask for it it's a second experience altogether when they bring the new car you must ask that they should wash it is that clear ask for it it's a second dealing the man has this i have brought your new car i'm going but nobody will know that this is a new car because of the poto poto, the, the mash, mash things that, they, that splash on the car, the doors. Nobody will know that it's a new car. Although they can hear from the engine. <laughs> Seeing the body, they will not be able to. You're born again. There is evidence of born again. But holiness to beautify your born again. To make you appear brilliant is the dust, is the mash upon the car. Cause it to be washed. Request somebody should wash it for you. Take it to the uh, where? Car wash. Take it to the car wash. Let them let them get it washed for your life. That's what the God of heaven is talking about. He will do for you. So that keeps you wonderful. Then you conform to the world now. Walk in the world and maintain steadily inner holiness, outward holiness. Inner holiness, now you have been purified by sanctification. Maintain that free, loving heart. As you see me standing, I love every one of you. It's not possible like that without sanctification. You hear? I'm not desiring any sin. No. I don't go to commit evil. I'm not planning evil against you. No. My heart cannot do that. Why? Sanctified. Cleansed. From that Adamic nature, nature of sin, is gone. That's what God wants. You are clear. Then it says there are things you need to do for yourself. What is that? 
remove ungodly clothes ungodly dresses ungodly adornment these do god has helped you to do for the heart do the body first in fact sometimes do your body first then i will know you're interested for me to perfect you remove the earrings the rings in your hand those things are the dressing of sinners god's children don't will use them jesus didn't use them you know the, the portrait of mary the mother of jesus they put they drew portrait of mary one time and put earrings on him catholics fought and say it's a lie mary didn't use them and that's true the sense of all the not only mary didn't use them so remove those things the earrings the necklace the rings the beads now what about the eyebrow the eyelash artificial palming artificial attachment artificial painting the clear dust the filthiness of the flesh look at it in the book of second corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 The Bible tells uh, Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Filthiness, dirty things in your body, which is the earrings, the rings, the nose rings, the poor dressing tight fitting dressing tight fitting blouse that expose your you for immoral lust on you that's filthiness painting of your face to make you beautiful that's showing that your heart is evil it's filthy get those things out yes having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit filthiness of spirit god has taken care of it in sanctification and then perfecting holiness in the fear of god walk towards holiness don't allow anything that will dampen you take care of your tongue that it does not speak evil this is the holy life this is the holy life your heart cleans your body cleans your tongue you take care of his claims you are serving your god without evil in this way you will understand again yes what the scripture i mean what the word here is saying that the holy god sent who lives in holy heaven sent his holy son jesus christ to the world to redeem man from sin and death I make him holy so that he may take him to his holy heaven to live with the holy God forever. So everything is holiness. And without holiness, your Christian life has no meaning. You won't make it to heaven. Because heaven is holy. God is holy. Jesus came to the world for purpose of holiness, to make people holy. If you really sought him well and mean business to serve him, he will make you holy and you will walk holy. There are examples of holiness. I am one of them. So what is your reason? What is your reason? Be ye holy, for I am holy. Let's rise up upon our feet and thank him for the word the Lord has brought. You have understood. Power belongs to God. If you say, come, come, sin no more. The power to keep you righteous will start walking in your own atmosphere. It will start walking around you, overcoming persons, overcoming things, overcoming demons, overcoming what? If you desire, if you want it, you have it. If you want it, but you just prefer darkness rather than light. You love Satan rather than God. You fear men more than God. 
That's where you are, where you are. There's no reason why you should be in sin. Why are you living and are not eating when Jesus has paid for all the food you can eat? All is identified with him. He will send your name to be among those that should eat free. Identify with Jesus. He will send your name to join those who are to eat free. Who are to, because he has paid for it. Identify with Jesus. He will report you to the Father to forgive your sins and not judge you because he has suffered the judgment for you. Ah. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lilies that grow by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. Wonderful Lord, you are fairer, much fairer than the lilies that grow by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Oh, oh. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. How wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lilies that grow by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Get Jesus. Invite him. Take over your life. Let him release his power upon you not to sin anymore follow it no satan can stop it no demon can stop it no man no woman